Good morning. May all who are able please rise to the call to worship and then remain standing for the, I mean, then remain listening to the hymn of praise. We trust in you, O God, for you are faithful. Show us your way and teach us your path. We wait for you. Lead us in your path of truth. Do not remember our failures. You are faithful, O God. Your love is steadfast. We lift up our souls to you and praise you always. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Genesis, and it can, it's about God's covenant with Noah uh, after the earth was flooded and, and Noah, the waters had receded and Noah was setting on, on dry ground. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as you came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you and for all future generations. I have set my bow in the, in the clouds and it shall be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the, the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the, the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of the flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have raised between me and all flesh that is on the earth. And may the Lord bless the reading of these words to our strength and nurture. Oh. 
I wanted to say a few moments, uh, a, a few things about blessings. Uh, speaking off the top of my head, I'm, I'm, I'm not good with telling stories. Um, I'm a trumpet player. If you want to hear me tell stories, you got to go somewhere that I'm playing blues, which wouldn't be here. But actually, it's not much of anywhere now because there's, there are not much thing, music events going on outside because of the COVID. <clears throat> when I think about blessings, if you think back in the, in the years of your life, you think about major positive events that have happened, the happiest moments of your life. Were, were wonderful blessings. But there are also times when there could have been an accident and it didn't happen, maybe in the car or something, and that is a blessing. But as you bring that forward in time, thinking last month, last week, even yesterday or today, there are blessings all the time. There, there are blessings we don't even realize. It's a blessing just to be here. It's a blessing to interact with you. It's a blessing to be able to close off the world around you and, and, and think about what, what the Lord means to you. It's a blessing to have the mind that can do that, a conscience, an intelligence. There are so many blessings that we have. So I would ask this morning that you, that you give, uh, thinking about the blessings and, and, and give from the love of your heart. Thank you, David, for sharing the blessing of your music with us. Would you pray with me, please? Heavenly Father, thank you that you can satisfy our every need. Your word says that we should give honor to you with the first fruits of our wealth. Accept our tithes and offerings as a gift to you and multiply what we give for your kingdom. 
May Christ dwell in our hearts through faith so that we may be filled with the blessings of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. Nice to see your shining faces back in the big room this morning. We welcome you. We welcome everyone who's joining us online. And I want you to share your joyful spirit with someone in the room just by turning around and waving to one another. That wave means I'm glad you're here. Some of you are standing and doing 360 degrees. That's a full service wave right there. Wonderful. Thank you. You see our sheet of prayer concerns in your bulletin. We would invite you to, to look at those concerns, to hold those in your hand as we go to God together in prayer. Let's pray. God has, as has been said, we are grateful for your blessings. For the blessing of this day, for temperatures above freezing later today, and for a fellowship of loving, caring folks. Thank you for the many ways that you enrich our lives with your love. We're grateful that we can come to you with our concerns, with our confessions, with our struggles, and that you always receive us. We lift to you, O oh God, our family, our friends, and others, people who we know are suffering loss and pain and grief and confusion and anxiety. We ask for the blanket of your peaceful presence to wrap them and to care for them. We pray for our city this day, O oh God, for the troubling news we hear about violence and homelessness and cruelty and loss of hope. We also lift up to you the many, many good things about our city, a sense of heritage, a sense of community, a hope for a return to health, physically and economically. We know you are with us, O oh God, in these times, and we know that you care about us. Help us, O oh God, prayerfully seek how we can be a positive influence in our community, spreading your love and living already the reality of a better future. We want to be involved in the answers to our own prayers. God, we seek to live more near to you in this season of Lent. Help us to focus our thoughts and our prayers and our time of turning toward you, connecting with you and with your will. May we breathe in your presence. May we be mindful of your presence throughout each day. God, we thank you always for the gift of Jesus in our lives and for the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At our Ash Wednesday service, we talked about feeling the burden of our own sin, about feeling bad about the ways that we have fallen short in our relationship with God. And it is important for us to acknowledge our sin and to repent. And in the midst of that, and even in the midst of that, 
There is nothing that keeps us from this table. We are welcomed here, not because we've checked enough boxes or have enough credits or have a sense of obligation. We come to this table because we're invited. So the message at the table is, come home, come here. Just as you are, whatever way you're feeling, that you might be feeling broken, guilty, ashamed, weary, lost, down, unworthy. But the words from Jesus are, come and have a meal with me. Let's talk. So we can always come home, back to this table, forgiven and included, loved in spite of what we've done or who we think we are. You are welcome here to Christ's table. You're welcome here to God's love. So we remember when Jesus gathered with his disciples at that table on that night, and he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. And in a similar way, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he passed it to all of them and said, drink of it, all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. When you eat this bread and drink this cup, remember me. Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we come to this table to receive your gift, your abundant gift of grace. God, these are life-changing moments for us. We confess our sin. We give ourselves afresh to you. And we're thankful for these emblems of body broken and of life poured out. Bless us in these moments. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us partake together.
Thank you, David. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we come to you in these moments ready to receive a word, a new word, a fresh word, a life-changing word. Come into our hearts and minds. Come into our very being and change us this day. We pray to you humbly in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to start with a question today, and that is, have you ever made a deal with God? Have you gotten into a pinch, a crisis, a something that you think, I'm not going to be able to get out of this, only God can get me out of this? Have you had that kind of? You don't need to raise your hand, you don't need to tell us about it. But I have a friend was a teacher and a coach, very successful in his career. And his daughter went into the hospital. And she was gravely ill. And it looked like she wasn't going to make it. So my friend went to God and prayed to God, God, you need to save her. And if you save her, if she comes through this, I'll become a minister. He made a deal with God. And his daughter got better. She's a happy, healthy adult today with children and grandchildren. So what do you think? What would you do in that situation? Obviously, you'd become a minister like he did and serve God for the rest of your life, right? But sometimes I wonder, you know, do we in our own experience when we make a deal with God, do we follow through on our part of the bargain? You know, that's a covenant and a covenant relationship. And sometimes we'll make good on it Sometimes not. So we're saying, God, let's make a deal. Let's make a covenant with one another. So for the next several weeks, we're going to be following the lectionary scriptures and considering a sermon on the covenant relationships that we have with God. That we are, as the bulletin of your, your bulletin cover says, we are the people of God. The covenant. And I would propose this perspective for the purpose of our sermon series. I think there are many different ways that we can look at the Bible, but one way we can look at the Bible is it's this account of the relationship between God and God's people. And when we read the book, we know we don't always come through on our end of the bargain, right? So we make a covenant, we break the covenant, and God says, let's try that again. (laughs) And then we try again, and we fail again, and we keep going through that cycle. So we can even start with the creation story. I mean, just open your Bible to Genesis 2 and 3, and you see God is creating humankind, desiring a relationship between God and God's people. And we're included in that relationship. These creation stories that we see in the Old Testament are really intended to answer some important questions, like, where did we come from? You know, what's our origin? And where was God back then? So we see in these early chapters of Genesis Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, and God says, everything is here for you. You can live in this paradise that I have provided for you. And there's one other thing. You're not allowed to eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. 
and the good and evil basically means the knowledge of everything. And we know that story, right? God makes a deal, and they break that covenant. And they're expelled from the garden, and we have some understanding in there about the roots of our sinful nature and the roots of our suffering. And that's what's carried down through oral tradition for the Hebrew people and for us. So that's where it began. And throughout Scripture, we see again and again, God is giving us a do-over. God is giving us a fresh start. And we try again and we fail again. And we try again and it just looks like this circle of life repeated throughout Scripture. So the sermon series is really about us and our relationship with God. And in this series, this is where we're headed. Today, as you can see by the sermon title, we're talking about Noah. Noah after the flood. Next week, we're talking about Abraham. And after that, the Ten Commandments. And the week after that, a commandment of grace. Grace written upon our hearts. And then, of course, the new covenant of Jesus. God saying, I love you this much a different way different kind of covenant and then the last sermon in this series is really for palm sunday and through holy week a covenant of celebration and of suffering so this journey that we're on in this sermon series is really preparation for us on our journey to easter so we're thinking about our relationship with god so let's look at our scripture for Noah in Genesis today. You know, it's not about building the ark or loading the ark or watching it rain or waiting for the waters to recede. This is alluded to in our scripture that God is frustrated with humankind, that they're not behaving well, that they're very destructive. And God decides in this story to purge the earth of these people and keep a few good ones, which Noah was grateful for, but to give them a fresh start, not just a fresh start in their life, but a fresh start for creation. And then it was realized that purging didn't work and that God needed to hit that reset button in a different way. So God promises in today's reading from Genesis to never do that again, to never destroy the earth with flood. And what's the symbol of that promise? A rainbow, right? So every time we see a rainbow, we can say there's a renewal of that promise. And this is a new covenant with limits, that God is limiting God's self to ne never be that destructive again. And over the centuries, we see many covenants and many attempts at defining the relationship with God and for us to commit to living a certain way. And for our other scripture reading this morning, we fast forward through all of those centuries into 1 Peter chapter 3, and there's a connection back to Noah. So it's about water and covenant, and now with a different twist. So let's listen to 1 Peter chapter 3, starting with verse 18. For Christ also suffered for sins once and for all, the righteousness, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from your body, but as an appeal to God 
for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. May God bless our reading and understanding of the Holy Word. Our covenant can be made with God one-on-one -on -one through our baptism. So I'm wondering, what do you remember about your baptism? And you say, well, can't set the bar very high. I was an infant. I was sprinkled. I just know what I was told. So for you, it may be both baptism and confirmation if you followed through on that. But for others, it's a believer's baptism. That when someone comes forward, we ask them to make the good confession, right? Do you confess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? And do you pledge to honor him, to follow him all the days of your life? Sounds like a covenant, doesn't it? And many people expect their lives to be very different after that. I have a story, I'm saving it for um, a 10-year-old and an 11-year-old sisters who got baptized years ago. It's a good baptism story, so stand by for that. Stick a pin in that. For some, life changes dramatically with baptism. For others, maybe it changes for a while and we fall back into old habits, to the way we've normally lived our lives prior to that time. And there's a parallel to Scripture. Just as God has been reaching out to humankind over and over and over through the centuries, God keeps coming back to us. So here's the big takeaway for today. God wants to be in relationship with us, with you personally. And God is not going to give up. Just as God has stayed with us over the centuries and said, let's try that again, God does that with our own lives, with my life, with your life. And I wonder, what is God willing to do? And what are you willing to do to create, to renew that relationship? If we rewind to the beginning of the sermon, what's the deal that you would want to make with God? Not out of crisis, but out of love, out of a desire for connection with God. I really think the answers to those questions make the heart of the covenant relationship. And it's in this Lenten season, through these days, that we focus on this holy relationship to confess our faults and our failings, to turn back to God, and God is there greeting us, kind of like the prodigal son story. He might even be running to us, open arms, welcoming, welcoming us back. And our part in that is to try again, to do our best. And I think it has to do with spiritual practices, spiritual disciplines. And here's a season to try something new or to try something again that may have worked for you in the past. Something that will help you feel closer to God. So a way that I want to encourage you to start that process is to take out your bulletin, look on the back, and go to the challenge for this week. These prayers, in a sense, set us on this journey. Number one, in this season of Lent, pray about how you will create or renew your covenant with God and ask God for help. Second, pray about who you will invite 
to be on this Lenten journey with you. Christian community makes such a difference. Is that a conversation partner? Is that a prayer partner? This is a rich time for us as believers. Our journey to Holy Week, our journey to the cross, our journey to resurrection. There is something we can do. There is a commitment we can make with God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your holy presence, for your divine grace that welcomes us back again and again and again. God, today we're asking for a fresh start. We're asking how can we be better and how can we do better. We lean on you. We depend on you. And we want your guidance. Bless us in this journey, O oh God, so we can grow, so we can be closer in our relationship with you. We thank you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we think of those prayers and rededicate ourselves to God, let's listen to our hymn of invitation and dedication, Lord, who throughout these 40 days, and you see the words in your bulletin. Let's listen to this wonderful music. Blessings to you as you are on this Lenten journey, this journey back to God, this journey toward Easter. I pray that your life has been enriched in this worship time. Go in God's peace. Amen.